Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Near for J online meetup. We've got a special, special version on a Monday uh, for you today. So this is uh, the founder of Graph Theory, uh, Leonard Euler's birthday. So that's why we're doing doing a meetup today. Uh, and this is also the online version of the uh, Global Graph Celebration Day. I always have to quite quite remember which way around those uh, those go. So. Um, if it's early enough in the day, there may well be another uh, in-person meetup for you to attend. So I'll paste uh, the link for that um, into the chat. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping before I um, introduce our speaker. Um, if you're um, watching this live, you can ask uh, us questions on the right-hand side in the YouTube chat, and I will uh, get the questions and ask them um, to the speaker. You'll also probably want to make sure that your resolution is set to 720p or higher. Uh, if you're watching this afterwards, I'll, I'll put a link to the near 4 j community forum so you can ask questions there. Um, so I guess that leads us to our speaker. So it's a return speaker. So we've got today, we have uh, Christoph Willemsen, the CTO of uh, Graphware, so near 4 j uh, partner. Uh, and he's going to be talking to us about content-based recommendations using uh, knowledge graphs. So Christoph, I guess I'll, I'll hand over to you and let you take us away. Thank you, Mark. All right. Is it OK? Yep, all good. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy birthday, Leonard. So thanks for joining this meetup about content-based recommendations uh, using knowledge graphs. So I'm Christoph, CTO at Graphower. I'm uh, using Neo4j since uh, seven years now, at Graphower since four years and a half. So we do yeah, daily. Uh, Neo4j based projects. And we have a specialization in recommendations, natural language processing, and knowledge graphs. In terms of outline for today, uh, I will first explain the problem that we're going to try to solve uh, with knowledge graphs, actually. So, why it can be useful for making better recommendations. Uh, then, so why not the knowledge graphs? Then, speaking about harmonizing data silos. So we will see that we will use different sources of data in order to improve the recommendations. I will speak throughout the whole demonstration about some natural language processing and deep learning uh, concepts. I will not go too in deep because it can take uh, days to explain all of this, but uh, it will give you a high level overview of how NLP and deep learning can be useful in such scenarios. And then we will conclude with a small summary. So first, the problem. Um, and to introduce the problem, I have um, the best forum in the world, which is the Neo4j Community Forum. Um, so there are questions asked on this forum and replies. And those uh, questions actually sometimes are not answered, but also sometimes are sad. And what I mean sad is that the, this page looks uh, sad. Why? I will explain why the sad is that there is a whole panel on the right that is unused here, where we could actually recommend the user a proposed solution based on historical data on the community forum. Or we could we have this box in the bottom, which actually provides a suggestion about our recommended topics. The problem is that uh, because this question was tagged with graph algorithms, which is not really the section where you should tag your question. So you it's a, about full text index, etc. The problem is that we can see that this course, which is the platform used uh, under the hood, well, provides suggested topic based on the category this question is in. Again, the suggestion here are quite poor uh, because of the wrong category. So this is the problem. And we're going to try to make this experience better. So provide better suggestion of recommended reads based on the historical data and other sources of data. Because there is uh, another aspect is that these suggestion topics 
provide and suggest only content from the same platform. So only the questions that have been posted on, uh, on the discourse community platform. But Neo4j has a pretty amazing community, especially uh, people writing content continuously. So we can see here, this is uh, Mark Needham, our host today. Uh, this is the statistics about his publications since 10 years already. This is the same for Max de Marzi. You can see that there is a lot of contents actually on the internet that can be relevant to that particular question. Again, there is also the Neo4j YouTube channel. Why did this video? Those videos can be transformed to text with the, with the help of transcripts. And so we could actually use it to also make recommendations. So as a summary of the <laughs> problem is that a wrong choice from the user would actually lead to poor recommendations. Uh, there is no category and tag suggestion to recommend the user for a better tagging. So actually, if we could propose directly the user to choose another category for his question, it would lead to much better suggestion as well. And there is no recommendations from sources outside of the community platform. So of course, here I only took three, but there is uh, there is a plenty of them. There is Michael Hunger's blog, Neo4j's own blog, the Grapher blog, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to solve this with what we call uh, knowledge graphs. But I want to explain maybe first what and why using uh, knowledge graphs. Well, first, what is a knowledge graph? Well, at the end, it's just a graph, right? So but a graph of knowledge. So here we know that we have a source of data, which can be Mark Needham blog, the community questions, the community forum that produce articles. Those articles have topics. And in the text, there are mentions of maybe APOC procedures, DB, internal procedures, some features. And those articles can be similar to other articles. So our problem is that we cannot <coughs> provide good similar to relationships, but also we cannot, we don't have features right now to extract APOC procedure names and internal DB procedure names from the text. So a knowledge graph actually describe the problem that you are trying to solve. So here, our problem is that we are trying to solve similar relationships between articles. And generally, knowledge graphs also oh, uh, oh, show you the, the path to the solution. Because if we can actually extract APOC procedure names, DB internal procedure names, feature names from the articles, but also create those relationships is similar to better topics, etc. Well, this is what will lead to our solution. Now, harmonizing uh, data silos. Well, as I said, there is a couple of data sources that we can use. First of all, of course, is this the Neo4j community forum. But we're going to use as well so the Mark Needham's blog, Max de Marzi's blog, and the Neo4j's YouTube channel. I will not go into the full ingestion process. I will just give some hints about where to find the sources for importing this data. So here, there is the Neo4j community forum that provides an RSS feed. And I wrote a write back, a write back um, um, subscriber to this RSS feed that you can use. It's open source on GitHub, so Neo4j Discord Slack. So the first goal of this. Um, Christoph, of this quick, yes, quick yes. feedback. Can you? Is it is it possible if you make your slides under full screen, like under play mode? Yeah. It's a bit, little bit hard for people to see some of the text. Great. Hopefully good. that's sorted out. Thanks. Okay. Good. 
So I, I wrote this application a while back for actually getting the data from the from the Neo4j community from in real time. So you you subscribe to the RSS feed and you get even. So you can use this application. You can also, um, for example, filter out uh, categories that you're not interested in, etc. So the first purpose of this application was actually to uh, notify on our Slack when a new question was uh, posted on the community forum. But this can be used for other purpose. So you can just extend the application and use it for your own purpose. For Mark Needham's blog, Max Demers' blog, etc. Well, there is no science. Uh, you have to parse. So uh, we have small Python scripts that use Scrapy for parsing the blocks and ingesting the data. So here in the example, you see that it first ingests into Elastic, but then we, because we hold the data, so we can reuse the data as we want. Uh, and then we feed it into an F4J. So if I would uh, check now the graph that we have, um, I can check that I have a community topic that so those are the <coughs> community topic questions that are from the the project blog. If if we want to take this question, we can just say where right. So this is. The question, this is the information we have about the question. So the categories, graph algorithm, and we have the text of the question here and the title of the question. Right, and we can see all the source that we have in the database. Okay, so I have community topic, Max Domarzi, Mark Needham, and YouTube channel. So the goal will be to start from a question and see how using the other sources of data can improve, can actually give some recommendations. The first thing we're going to do is, um, well, extracting the topics from the questions themselves. So on the community question, forum, there is topics, but also tags. So here, there are no tags. But if I would choose maybe another question. Here. Uh, are the tags? No. Check five. <coughs> yeah, here we can see demo, video, and presentation tags. So I'm going to consider the tags and the categories as a topic, so it can be used uh, together for the recommendation. So to do this, we're going to extract and split. So the, the tags are stored in an array, so we can just unwind them and create the tag, the, the topic notes. So here, I find all the community topic questions. I don't want the categories. I create the topic, and I merge the question to the topic. All right, I will do the same for the tags. All right, so now we can look at our graph. So the pink nodes are the question. The blue node are the topics. So we can see already that we start to make connections between the articles, the questions, or the articles themselves. So here, the for graph platform, knowledge base, GraphQL, etc. Categories and tag. 
So in terms of our knowledge graph, what did we do? So the only thing we could do is take a source of data, put the article from community neofg.com and extract the tags and categories into their own topics and relate the articles uh, between, between them. There is, however, one small issues. So the information that we have in the graph is mainly coming from uh, structured information. That means that we could only use with the data that we have, not the data that we think we could have. So by that, I mean that uh, we know that there are mentions of APOC and such procedures into the text, but we cannot really extract them as it is, because it's, it's quite complicated, I think. Uh, and secondly, if I take an article like from Max Marzi or, or Mark Needham's blog, the problem is that their category, so if I go to Mark Needham, Mark Needham, here. Well, probably the categories that are here, if there are some, will not match with the categories that are available on the community forum or they are non-existent or they will not match. So that means that we cannot recommend based on the, on the topics, content outside of the, the community platform. So this is why what we're gonna uh, try to improve as well. So let's start with uh, the first. So uh, no distinct <coughs> for about APOC and procedures. So how can we actually extract those informations from the text? Well, we're gonna use uh, natural language uh, processing tools. Um, and mainly, if we think about natural language processing and its implication in knowledge graphs, we can say that actually natural language processing helps for creating the relationships needed for a particular solution. What I mean by that is that if we look at our graph here, we know that one of our solution for creating recommendations is to create links between an article and specific nodes of APOC procedure, specific nodes of DB procedures, specific nodes of features, etc. So natural language processing will actually help us to create those relationships into our knowledge graphs. And if you know GraphRare, you know that we provide um, natural language processing extension atop Neo4j. So I will not go too much into detail, but um, we have created actually the ability to do almost all natural language processing steps with the help of uh, Neo4j cipher procedure. So here, for example, what I can do is I can take an article, like or on article, and I can say to annotate the text. By the annotation, what does that mean? Is that it will extract the sentences and the tokens from the text and apply some labels to those tokens. When, for example, uh, the token is recognized as an APOC procedure, or is recognized as a person, or is recognized as a location, or its sentiment is positive, things like this. So we're gonna run this here. All right, so now I will show the graph. So you have to know that natural language processing tools are very, very heavy based on linguistic uh, features. So, for example, if the word is a verb or if the word starts with a uh, capital letter, etc. So, here we could extract named entities, so things that are not just a word but are actually representing something in the real world. And we can analyze those entities. So, this is our text, the entry point to the NLP. Um, NLP graph, 
and our sentence and three named entities recognized. If we take here the first entity, we can see that it is recognized as an entity miscellaneous. So, which means for us nothing. Actually, we'll discard them. So, it's just that the linguistic parser recognizes this as not just a word, it can be something relevant, but we don't know what. Same for Ebola. And interestingly, same for dollar categories. It is recognized as a money. Why? Because it's one token and it starts with a dollar. So you can see that using out of the box natural language processing tools, generally is not useful. You don't have to use NLP just for the sake to use NLP. You, you have to know why NLP sometimes is not working or how to make also the natural language processing uh, better. So how can we actually improve this step is by training the natural language processing engine to speak the same language as we want, uh, as we do. So the language we speak is epoch procedure, DB procedure, features, articles, topics, etc. The problem is that um, generic, generic natural language processing engines will recognize generic entities. We speak about persons, locations, money, dates, organization names, which in our case is not very useful, but it's because they have been trained on generic data sets such as Wikipedia, etc. So how can we train our system? Well, the training is a very heavy process. So the first thing to have is a label data set. That means that you need to take a thousand examples, for example, of text documents that are relevant to your domain. So here we could take, for example, a hundred uh, thousand articles from the community forum and then start to manually annotate it. So if I take how this process is done, I can take this question here. I can in a tool that helps for annotations, create an annotation task. And I can start to annotate the text. So for example, here, I can say that full text is a feature. I can say that unwind is a cipher close. I can say that db.index.fulltext.query notes oh, here is a procedure. I can say that Java long class cast exception is an exception. And I would do this for thousands or more than thousand documents. And what's it done? It creates me actually an example that I can use to train the natural language processing engine in order to recognize them in the text. So I will not do it for thousands because I already did it actually. So here, actually I have more data sources from Neo4j where actually we annotated already this data. And what the output is of this process is a huge file that represents the thousands of documents that you have. So where each word is actually on one line with at the end a label here when it is O, it means there is no named entity. And here you can see there is epoch. That means that it is recognized as a um, uh, epoch entity, etc. So they will become actually distinct nodes, I mean, and a label into a graph. So you can imagine the size of the text for 3,000 documents, but this is not uncommon to have a million documents, for example. So uh, generally, especially with machine learning tools, more data, if you can have, it's, it's better. So, and we can reuse it into a graph. So in order to 
understand how it is represented afterwards. We can take an article and find actually some articles here. I will maybe zoom out a bit. So the green nodes are procedures. So here I can change to value. And the, yeah, that's it, procedures. So you can say here, So those are sentences where there is a procedure inside them. That means that we can already start to connect articles between them that use the same procedure names. So if we would take actually our current example article, I could take my article with the ID 1291, find the whole path. So this is a bit verbose, but this is very needed because we hold a lot of context of the words in the sentences themselves. So I find the, the occurrences of procedure or everything that is relevant, so procedure, epoch, etc. And I, I find again, let's say recommendation where there is the same mention of the same procedure in their sentences. So if we run this query, we can see that for the question as example, this is the first recommendation and the similar procedure that are returned. So here I could add a distinct actually. All right. By just extracting named entities from the text, we can see that we can actually already return relevant similar articles that the user can read. Now I want to mention something about named entity. So under the hood, it uses machine learning algorithms such as CR, uh, CRF, for example. The problem is that sometimes it's not useful to, sh to use machine learning based uh, algorithm. So why? Especially, uh, I mean, the best example I can give is that you want to return only the names of the current NBA players. Well, with the problem with machine learning, I mean, it's not a problem, it's a good thing, but is that it tries to generalize. So that means that if you annotate, even if that document, for example, unwind, full text, it will try to recognize other words that could mean the same thing and would map it to the same concept. So if we take the examples of the NBA players, that means that it will recognize other persons in the text with uh, sufficient data, it will generalize and recognize other person that are not NBA players. It's just because natural language processing is based on linguistic features. So in that case, and probably in the uh, in the procedure names, for example, we would be better off to use a uh, re regex-based parser, for example, for extracting automatically uh, the entities from the text. So, however, for the con concepts, full text, we could generalize, etc. So, yeah. This is something to, to think about when you do natural language processing. It's sometimes machine learning is not the solution. Um, okay. So if we take back again our graph here, what could we do? We could do the source connected to an article, the topics, and the connections to epoch procedures, DB procedures and features. However, one thing we couldn't do yet is connecting Mark Needham blog together with topic because there is no such topic into, uh, into the content. So here, 
again, we're going to use some natural language processing tools. And a bit more complex, but kind of easy to use with our plugins. Um, it's called document embeddings. So if you're familiar with word to vec or word embeddings, if you know how, how it works, it's actually vector, a word that contains a vector embedding meanings about this word. So for example, if you visualize on the, on the vector space model, the word king, you could see that it's very similar to queen. The word man is very similar to woman, such as apple is related to fruit and apple with a big A is related to company or to iPhone, for example. But this is great for words. The problem is that if you compare just words together, there is no meaning about uh, sentence ordering, word ordering in the sentence, etc. And this is where you can use document embeddings. So you will actually pass the whole sentence where each word in a neural network will feed its own word embedding. So this has a huge advantage in the fact that for complete sentence, you can find similarities between texts that don't speak the same language. To give you an example, because this use word embedding, the sentence, the president flew to California last night, will be very similar to Donald Trump arrived in San Francisco. Just because it used word embeddings and those words carry out meaning with them, and they will be able to, to recognize sentences uh, even if they don't speak the same language. And it, it works as well across languages. So that means that you could find uh, a, a, a sentence and find a similar article in another language, for example, because word embeddings are provided in multiple languages. So how are we going to use document embeddings to do this? Well, the first thing is that we have to create uh, a training, a train model for the topics. So I will show quickly here. We're going to create a model that will take first every article. Um, once again, community question. Which topic? Sorry. That's, that's it. We'll take every article will related to a topic. So this counts because we only have this relationship for the community questions. We we'll have one question and one or multiple topics. Then we'll return the text of the question and the topic name as the label or the class for the training model. So at the end of this output, we will have a model where for each label, it contains all the, the document embeddings of the text that were related to that label. So, and once it will be built, we will be able to request to that model with new text where this, in which topic this text should be cl classified. So what we will do, we'll create the model based on the community questions. Then we will take the articles from the Mark Needham's blog, ask the model, predict me in which topic this should be classified, and we will create that relationship. So let's first create the model. It will, it will take a bit, so approximately 50 minutes. No, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, let's see. We have to wait a bit, so um, maybe it's time for questions. Mark, if there are. Yeah, someone was just asking, what, what is the tool that you're showing? So I guess maybe you can show the Hume, the Hume page. Yeah, so this is uh, Hume Labs. So Hume is a commercial uh, software where actually we add uh, interface atop our plugins and also some uh, enterprise features of our plugins. But especially the labs helps uh, teams to annotate uh, documents uh, for creating models specific to their domain. So. Um, when I speak about teams, is that we, we have use cases where 
uh, annotation centers, for example, have thousands of annotators and they create squads for annotating different concepts. So it can be, uh, it can be entities, but also relationships between, uh, between entities. Uh, and if it generally they will assign the same documents to some squads so they can see uh, the conflicts or some convergence between the understanding of the same text, etc. Because language is is very uh, very complex. Sometimes um, the same word doesn't mean the same thing to the same person. So this is why there is the importance to have overlap between the documents annotations between different persons. So managers, I mean the reviewers of the annotations, can detect conflicts and and do feedback, retrain their team based on the language. I mean, this is very, uh, sometimes it's very complex. So, uh, yeah, so this is, this is all up, so. Okay, got three more questions now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you represent articles as a series of word embeddings or a single document embedding? By Zach, Zach asks that question. So one, the text of one article is one document embedding, but the classifier, so the model trained at the end is not based on the uh, is based per class, right? So one topic will have one big embedding for all the documents. So yeah, so you can actually because they are vectors, uh, we can even store those vectors. I mean, I have a uh, some leftover test on my uh, on my database, but for example, you can see here. Uh, I take a random article. There is also the doc to hack, which is the name of the algorithm, uh, where we store the vector. So this is the document embedding vector. Cool, right? a, lot, so, a lot of numbers. Yeah, and, <laughs> and because they are vectors, you can use, uh, for example, cosine similarity to, co to compute the similarity between two, two documents based on their vectors, for example. Yeah, that's actually, that leads us to another question. Yeah. Um, which is which is by Erdl. I, I was just wondering if you used the similarity analysis in the process. I guess uh, not. Not yet. So uh, I will come later to the similarity, right, um, cool. but we don't use it here yet. So I'm waiting the model to finish, okay. uh, but it it will be soon. So uh, don't worry. Normally it's, it was uh, six minutes or something, but I, I have some uh, some so queries. Yep. Still got more questions for you. Yep. Uh, from Rodrigo, do you have an integration with chatbots with Hume? Uh, we do. Um, it depends what type of chatbot. I mean, for example, we don't generate response, so that means that the architecture of the da database has to be very. We have a very opinionated way of storing data for chatbots. Uh, but we use uh, uh, natural language processing for chatbots as well. Uh, but you have to know that chatbot is not easy. It, I mean, there is no out of the box uh, solution that can do chatbots on your knowledge graph without having to to fine tune uh, a bit. So, uh, but we do. Yeah, we have capabilities for intent detection, for uh, uh, content retrieval based on the question, etc. So, if you look actually on YouTube or mainly on YouTube, you can see a couple of a presentation we did about using chatbots with NeoJ and NLP. And also I, I showed during graph tour last year, um, an integration with Alexa, for example, for voice-based uh, questions to the graph, for example. So yeah, we do. Um, oh. But yeah, it's, I mean, in the, in the real world, it's not so easy. I mean, there is, uh, uh, there is fine tuning to do, but yes, we. Okay, next question. So, so I think you showed so far. You've showed doing annotation, NLP, uh, an annotation. Do you do you have any other methods or that you're going to show? Or that about, it supports? about what? About annotation or about? Uh, yeah. Well, the question is: Was annotation the only NLP method that is implemented, or are there other methods? Oh no, there are plenty of methods. So if I mean, I cannot show everything today. Yeah. But if you go to, uh, let me show you, Neo4j NLP. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can also share this, yeah. this link for people. If you go to Neo4j NLP, you will find uh, in, the, in, in the open source version, 
a couple of uh, features. So we have keyword extraction, we have sentiment analysis, uh, part of speech, stemming, uh, topic modeling uh, with LDA, we have talk to vec we have k-means. I mean, there are a lot of stuff. So, uh, yeah. Okay, and, oh, it's nearly done. It's done. Okay, yeah, one more question. Done. One it's more done. question before we do yeah. this. Uh, are you creating a classification prediction model, e.g. neural net on top of the doctor vec embeddings, or are you doing a matrix factorization into the topic space, e.g. SVD? No. From Zach again. No, it's, uh, it's using purely the uh, the prediction uh, based on Dr. Vec, actually. So, okay. uh, yeah. So we don't do additional uh, stuff. Actually, the, the library we're using is pretty uh, pretty well furnished. So th there is all the features for for document embeddings, also k-means over those embeddings, etc. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty great. So uh, and we actually. The good thing with document embeddings is that even when you have small amount of data per class, so small amount of examples, you you can still still have low but good accuracy. Uh, while if you're using much more models, such as for example Facebook provide as well per, uh, text classifiers uh, with some small amount of data set, they will provide zero. Uh, things it will even to an error because there is not enough examples, for example. So it's pretty great to to use Dr. Vec uh, in in the real world actually, uh, because having dozens of examples is not always the case to all uh, the people. So so yeah, so the model is finished. So now we can uh, we can actually get the topic prediction. So I will take some um, some blogs from marketing uh, website uh, i will especially constrain to containing neo4j for this example query why because uh, mark wrote a couple of i mean a couple of a good amount of articles that are not related to especially to neo4j as well uh, and i will take five and then i will ask the classifier to uh, return me the label and the score so let's check here, so here it is the title of Mark's Needham blog post. This is the label to which it was classified, and this is the score. Same here, analyzing CSV file, this Kubernetes, orchestration, graphing, my name, etc. So, of course, the prediction are, I mean, can look Word, but again, it depends on the content that was posted in each of those categories on the community forum. So the model is, the accuracy of the model will depend on the accuracy of the classification used manually by the people on the community forum. So if a lot of those are wrong, or there is too much actually content going into community content and blogs category, etc., this might actually influence the quality of your model. Right, so now let's do this uh, for all. So I'm gonna use APOC here. So I'm gonna take all Mark Needham's blog post, find actually the possible labels and get the prediction. Um, and then I will store that prediction. How I will store it, I will just create a relationship between Mark Needham's blog note in topic ML, I will make a distinct relationship type because it's useful actually to uh, to actually decrease the score if a recommendation comes from that side, for example. I mean, whatever logic you want to that topic. All right, so it started um, and I prepared something to show while it was running. So here, there are already some question. I mean, because we're using Epoch dot uh, iterate the transaction are already committing in the background, so we can actually already check some results. So here we can see Magnetum scalar driver. It will be classified in the Spark uh, topic from the community forum, and this is also a related uh, a related question or. or article on the community forum that is related to that Mark Needham's blog. So now if we 
we can take other things, I don't know, Scala, Fedora, Debian. <laughs> yeah. My logic is, is related to Brexit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so it, again, it's uh, maybe clustering. It depends on the content. It depends also, again, about, because it's here. Yeah, it's just that this appears to be in the Neo4j developer block, Akai, for example. So oh, then if we want to visualize this much more as a graph, we can see here. Okay. So this is uh, here. This is a community topic. Can I? No, it doesn't. Let me. OK. So this is a topic. This is a community question or content. And this is Mark Needham blog. All right, so we can see that with the help of uh, NLP and deep learning, we could actually make those relationship possible. All right. So, other questions before I continue? No, we're good no. for now. Okay. So. I'm waiting impatiently. It stops. Okay. Let's check quickly the status. Merge and that work. Almost done. All right. It's 1391, so I know it's almost done. Right, we're going to do the same with Max Domarzi, but there is less data, so it's going to be good. <laughs> just less, he's just less prolific than me, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mind you, his, his average yeah. post size is probably longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you wrote it more than 10 years ago, so... You yeah, I used to write. write yeah. I used to write a lot like yeah. a while ago. Not so much now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's finished. Okay. So now it's running for Max, but it's going to be fast. Um, so let's take quickly again the query for you here. Okay. So let's maybe here fault works. Uh, let's take it to where and that text contains the of a J and okay so you can see here the analyzing CSV actually that category is leading to some strange stuff I mean so what is it doing now is it, is it now posts of mark against posts of max or still just so here, now Max is finished. So now I'm going to actually take some content for uh, from Max, the same as you. So you can see here, this is community topic, a topic. This is Max blog post. All right. 
So you can see the relationship. So we can maybe return 25 or 100 of them. All right. So this is max post post, max post post. And we know that max love Java, right? So, <laughs> so this is the topic. Now, if we want, we can see the connections between your blog post and max blog post, for example. All right. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take your topic, classified uh, your blogs that classified in the topic, and same for Max. I'm just going to filter out some two generic categories, actually, because uh, the, it leads to word stuff. So we can see here is the topic name, your blog, and Max towards this blog. Uh, but we can see here Java, JDBC driver on your case, flight search with Neo4j, Java, Java, flight search. We know that Max loves to write with the Java API. So, so generally, everything Java will need to uh, do Max uh, stuff. But again, your blog about JDBC, about Java, about uh, Spark, uh, Python, etc. So, this is the connections uh, between. Uh, between you. And if we want to actually see, for example, with the articles we took here, if we would say, okay, in that box, we want to recommend also articles coming from the outside of the platform, we could do it now easily because we can use, uh, well, the classifier, okay, where actually based on that question, this is max blog post that would be returned uh, based on the classification. So here, enabling full text search, finding triplets, delivering graph-based search solution to slightly wrong data, etc., which is quite relevant because it's about full text search. Um, and uh, yeah, and similarly, we can use. So we can use one way, we can use, so that way, we can use the name that it is recognized way. So here, this is another article recommended and why. And that's it. We can also, I want to show, so about those similarities. So let me check in my history here. Okay, it's not here. So let's say I want to take two articles. So let me do this. Uh, sorry. I will return the ID and title ID. Okay, no, it's not this ID. We go. For example, I will return that one. So I take the vector of the question. I take the vector of the recommendation. I can return the similarities between those two. So I'm using for that the array property that we saw earlier to return similarity. Right? We can see it's similar at 25%. So you can do this actually for all the things. So you can store the more similar articles as well between the nodes. So I could store and store the similarity. Other questions? Uh, <clears throat> got a couple. OK. So first one is, do you have any experience assessing or assigning truthfulness to claims or accuracy slash legitimacy uh, to opinions? <laughs> so it is, uh, 
Is this what fake news discovery? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That sounds like to me. Yeah, um, we do. Um, but again, it's not, uh, I mean, the structure of your graph is different than what we see here. So if you, it, by storing a lot of information, so as I said, the graph is pretty verbose. So we can actually materialize the graph. So now if I want to say, I will create a, a node person, I will create a node epoch. So we just the label epoch and I will create a relationship between an article and epoch. And on the relationship, I will store actually all the facts. So all the articles that make this relationship possible. Then you can, uh, you can start to evaluate the accuracy or the truth of some, uh, some facts. So also if there are contradiction between facts sometimes, but to be honest, this requires also relationship extraction generally, because you need to recognize the relationship in the text. So let's say, for example, uh, I saw John riding a Ferrari and you can make a relationship because there is a linguistic relationship. Uh, John drives Ferrari, for example. Uh, and then you would have another fact that say, John doesn't have a driving license. So you have to combine machine learning with some uh, human based works, actually. The fully, mach fully automated is quite complicated, but yes, it's, it's, a, it's a use case we have, yes. Okay, and one more question that's there right now. Is that the Dr. Vec thing you showed, is that in the Neo4j NLP package or is that only in uh, Hume or where, where is that? It is, uh, it is in Hume, but Dr. Vec in Java is available open source. I mean, you, and so you if know. people want to like use some of the stuff that is in Hume, like what's the approach to doing that? They can ask for a trial. We can send a limited time. So do they go, I think I shared uh, hume.graphway.com. Is that the best place to go or is there a better place? Uh, the best place you would say, send an email to info at graphway.com. Uh, info, uh, yeah. okay, info at graphway.com. Cool, yeah. I'll put that on the, on the yeah. chat as well. Cool. Well, yeah, that's all the questions we got for now. Okay, good. Yeah, so I guess we're, we're pretty, pretty close, close to the, to the yeah, top. Yeah, that's the, right. I mean, we can start to, I will just make one new query. Right. And yeah, while you're doing that, if, um, if you've enjoyed this, and I guess by the comments, a lot of people have, uh, have enjoyed watching this, don't forget to like the video so that other people, other people can, can find um, um, Christoph's, um, Christoph's work. And, and we've included links to the repository and to the Hume tool that Christoph's been demonstrating. So don't forget to to go and visit those if you haven't looked up in the chat so you can try it out uh, on your own data. Um, and Christoph writes a lot of stuff as well, so we can, uh, we can certainly link to some of, um, some of that as well. Cool, so what's our last demo then? Yeah, I just, again, we, if you look at the queries we made before, uh, sorry, I will take the other one. This is the query that we we now get to. This is the results that now we are with NLP and knowledge graphs enabled. So we actually is pretty relevant based on the question. And this is the results that we have by using actually only the structured features that are available in the data. Where actually when this is wrong, uh, wrong features, we get wrong results actually. So this is what uh, I wanted to point out uh, uh, as a last query. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Yeah, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks right. Mr. for taking the time. And thanks, everybody, for, for watching. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.